Reflections in capture are normally limited to the primary reflection, that is, the first bounce between the light and the camera. In this design, the stage floor has been very smooth or has a low roughness value set in the material. And as a result of that, we can see the fixtures basically reflecting in the floor. If we want to be able to see other objects reflected, that is a secondary bounce, then we need to work with something that we call reflection planes. Reflection planes can be added to the design in the library tab under the built-in category. If we scroll to the bottom, you will find the reflection plane object. I'm going to drag and drop this and place it on the left side of the stage. You can see that the reflection plane has a size and that we can only see reflections of the back scenery where the plane is present. So moving the plane left and right, you can see that reflections only occur within the uh, extents of the reflection plane. We can change the size of the reflection plane under the selected items category in the design tab. Normally you would set it to be large enough to include the entire surface that you want to be reflective. In this example, I'm going to make it slightly smaller though, so that you can easily see where it is present and not. Two things that are important for the reflection plane to work are number one, it needs to be close to the surface that you want to be reflective. That means if I move the plane up from the floor in this case, the reflections disappear. So the plane needs to be close to the surface that is to be reflective. The second thing that is important is that the material of the surface itself needs to have a high smoothness or a low roughness. So if we go to the floor material that is applied to the floor, we can see that the roughness is quite low. If I increase the roughness, there is a point at which the reflections completely disappear from the floor. And of course, at maximum roughness, the reflections are strongest. A couple of other material properties worth pointing out are the metallic property, which you can use to make the surface behave as a metal, which has other, um, uh, a metallic surface responds differently to lighting than a non-metallic, say, plastic surface. And second, I want to show that if we change the color of the surface, this also affects the way it interacts with the reflections. So in this example, we've basically got a red plastic, very glossy or reflective surface. Thank you so much for watching.